Thank you. Thank you very much, Galip, and thank you to the organizers for, for inviting me for, very, for a very valuable discussion. Is this, is this working? Is it working, the mic? Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, I think if, uh, if Paolo was struggling to fill eight minutes on European policy in the, in the region, I think eight minutes on US policy in the region uh, will be less of a struggle. On the one hand. On the other hand, I think with the new US administration, there is still an enormous amount of uncertainty. Uh, it's very difficult to read which direction President Trump's administration will go. Uh, there are a lot of contradictory signals. Uh, I think also if you look back to his predecessors, President Bush came to office saying that he was going to withdraw the US from the world, and then there were the attacks in 2001, 9-11 attacks, and of course he went back into enormous nation-building projects in Iraq and Afghanistan. Obama said he was going to pivot to Asia, and then there was the Arab uh, revolutions and the rise of, the, of, of ISIS, and he was brought back into the Middle East. So I think it's very difficult to, to, to predict. Uh, the world won't sit still waiting for U.S. foreign policy to develop. Something will happen. President Trump will have to respond. And in some ways, probably his response to an event will shape his presidency more than anything he's saying now. So I think there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, that said, I think what is clear, uh, and, and you referenced it, Gallup, what is clear is that the new administration will focus very much uh, in the fight against uh, what he calls uh, terrorism, against the Islamic State, against Al-Qaeda. Uh, the definition of that, I think, is, 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 is there's some question about that. But that is clearly one of the, the, the main priorities. Now, in some ways, that's not a big departure from, uh, from the Obama administration. I think, like Obama, as you say, Gallup, President Trump doesn't believe in, in grand design, that, that he can remake the Middle East uh, or reboot the politics of the Middle East or redesign regional orders. I think that uh, there is some continuity there, but I think there are uh, pitfalls or, or aspects in the focus on counterterrorism, uh, the, the, the prioritization of counterterrorism. There are some, some changes or some potential pitfalls which could, uh, could play out in slightly different ways. I think the first of these is probably there will be uh, perhaps less uh, concern about civilian casualties during attacks. I think you've seen some loosening of the rules on U.S. airstrikes, uh, which perhaps impacted the strikes in Yemen, uh, the recent one in Syria. <coughs> so you could have operations that kill more people, uh, which obviously will, will anger the communities that are essential to, 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 to winning the fight against, uh, against ISIS or Al-Qaeda. I think that's first. I think perhaps on a, on a more geopolitical level, uh, the, there will be less, perhaps less concern for how the U.S. focus on fighting ISIS or Al-Qaeda plays into other regional rivalries. Uh, for very few states in the region, uh, as, as others have said, the main priority is fighting ISIS. Most states in the region use that fight as a way of strengthening their hand against other traditional enemies. And I think it's easy to see that, uh, that that focus, focusing on ISIS, focusing the fight on Al-Qaeda, could play into other regional rivalries. Clearly, there's a danger of this for the offensive in Raqqa. There's a danger of this in, in arrangements uh, in Mosul. Uh, after, as looks likely to happen, uh, ISIS is, is ousted from the city. So it's easy to see how uh, a U.S. increased focus on fighting ISIS, on fighting Al-Qaeda, could play into regional rivalries, and in some cases, uh, aggravate them. I think the third big difference, and this is really a big departure, Galip, you mentioned it, is the focus at the same time as fighting ISIS and Al-Qaeda on fighting Iran, uh, on really confronting Iran in a much more aggressive way uh, than the Obama administration did. And there again, I think there are, there are, there are some dangers uh, trying to fight Iran directly or confront Iranian proxies directly or Iranian allied armed groups directly in Syria or in Iraq or in Yemen, I think could prove extremely destabilizing. Uh, it's, uh, it's easy to see how an escalation there could, for example, weaken or put Pre uh, Prime Minister Abadi in Iraq in an extremely difficult position. Uh, so it's, it's, it's easy to see how an escalation against Iran while at the same time trying to fight more aggressively ISIS and Al-Qaeda this, is, this, is, this potentially opens the, opens the door to, to a lot of uh, destabilizing, uh, destabilizing violence in the region. And I think we can talk through in the discussion about different ways that might happen, but I don't see that the U.S. has, has any immediate good options for reversing uh, Iranian influence in the region. 
the third or the fourth, uh, I think, departure or the fourth potential pitfall in this overwhelming focus on, on ISIS and Al-Qaeda or in this overwhelming focus on counterterrorism, and again, it's a departure from the Obama administration, I think is um, the lack of definition about who is the enemy. I think the Obama administration was fairly clear that the big enemy was ISIS, was Al-Qaeda, was groups that targeted the US, sort of global groups. I think some in the US administration, again, the cabinet is, is, is maybe divided on this, but some in the US administration also seem to believe that the Muslim Brotherhood is perhaps the problem as well. Uh, that, that many Islamist groups that fight alongside Al-Qaeda may also be a problem. So I think the definition of the enemy, uh, a too wide definition of what the U.S. is trying to do, of who the U.S. is trying to fight, could also be a problem. Clearly taking a stronger position on the Muslim Brotherhood would be, would be a problem for the U.S. It would uh, be difficult for U.S. relations with countries where Muslim Brotherhood offshoots, uh, members of Muslim Brotherhood offshoots sit in parliaments or cabinets, whether it's Jordan or Morocco. Uh, or Tunisia, uh, it would be difficult for countries like Turkey or Qatar, sympathetic to the Muslim Brotherhood. So I think it, defining the enemy again, defining who the U.S. is actually trying to, 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 to fight again is, a, is, another, is another difference. I think a fourth, a fifth difference might be that uh, the U.S. puts much less uh, emphasis on peace processes, on U.N. brokered peace processes, whether in Yemen or whether in Syria, whether in Libya, now, again, those UN peace brokered peace processes weren't going very far. I mean, they, 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 uh, they in some places, were, were fig leaves while armed actors changed facts on the ground. But there's still a value in the process. Uh, and in no place, I think in no country where ISIS or Al-Qaeda has been able to seize territory, is there a single force strong enough to hold the whole country. I think this applies in Libya, it applies in Syria, it applies in Iraq, it applies in Afghanistan, it applies in Yemen. So some form of accommodation in all these countries is going to be necessary. At some point, you will need peace processes in all these countries. And I think without those peace processes, without that accommodation, aggressively supporting one side uh, to pursue counterterrorism will inevitably make, make those peace processes more difficult. And I think the last, uh, the last big difference appears to be much less emphasis on diplomacy. Uh, you see this in uh, the new administration's proposed budget, budget cuts to the, state's to the State Department, the fact that uh, new Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has not been able to staff his top levels yet. There seems to be a, a less emphasis on, on diplomacy, uh, and of course diplomacy will be essential in, in the region. I mean, you, can't, you can't just have a military strategy in the region without diplomats. Diplomats need to manage the, the potential fallout from the Raqqa operation. Uh, they need to manage what happens in Mosul. They need to think through how to, how to mediate or, or facilitate talks between factions in different countries. So I think this, this, this diminution of diplomacy is also a big change and potentially, potentially one that's, uh, that, 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 that could prove difficult. I think overall, I think of course the, 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 the US focus to some degree on, on, on ISIS and Al-Qaeda is, is understandable given the perceived threat uh, in the US that these groups pose. Uh, that said, a focus on that, if a focus on that plays into the disorder in the region, if you look at what happened, what's happened over the last few years, if you look at the rise of the Islamic State, if you look at right, the rise of ISIS, if you look at the resurgence of Al-Qaeda, mostly they've been able to exploit uh, new wars, uh, they've been able to exploit uh, the, 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 the vacuum that's left when states collapse. And I think the, 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 the overriding uh, challenge for the administration will be trying to fight these groups while at the same time not aggravating the conditions that, uh, that, that gave rise to them, not aggravating conditions that in the end will play into their hands. Well,